it is Alisa here, or the Diamond Stitcher, as I go by on YouTube and Instagram. Hello, good morning, or good afternoon, whatever time of day you are watching this. I hope you're having a wonderful one. If you are new to my channel, first off, welcome. I'm happy you found me, and I hope you would consider subscribing and stick around for all things diamond painting. And if you are returning, thank you so much for your continued support. I have a new video for you guys that I have not yet done on my channel. I have also never done this before, so this is going to be quite interesting. It's either going to be an epic success or an epic failure. Time will tell. Now, what I am going to do in this video, I have saved my Diamond Art Club Tweety Bird. She is part, or he, sorry, is part of the Little Diamonds collection at Diamond Art Club that they came out with in January, and I knocked this out in about two weeks. I set him aside waiting for the energy to film a framing video and here we are today. So the first thing I am going to do is explain a little bit of what I got on the table here. So what I did is I purchased these stretcher bar frames from Amazon. They came in a kit with all four pieces. You have to have the measurements of your specific diamond painting down and what I did was I searched stretcher bar frame and I put the inches that I needed in the search bar and then I just looked around until I found the one that I thought was what I was looking for and thankfully it was. So I will put the link for this set in the description box of the video. I will put the Amazon Canada and Amazon USA link. But do remember, it's not like one size fits all. If, if you're gonna do this on your diamond painting, you actually have to measure your diamond painting and you, you may need a different set than this. But just so you know what brand or what type I used, I will link it down below. It came with, of course, instructions and then some goodies in this bag that will help us complete this kit. I should say how I usually finish off my diamond paintings, I usually paint the borders with black acrylic paint and then I will hang them up in my bathroom on the curtain rod system. I will post a picture of what that looks like up on the screen now with a old, old favorite that I have had up again since Christmas time. That's what I usually do. I decided not to paint this border. I don't need much of the border colored for this. Now, depending on the size of your wood pieces that you get, you may or may not have some of your border or all of your border or none of your border showing. So it just depends on the size of the painting and how tight those bars are going to fit together in relation to the size of your diamond painting. What I decided to do there we go, it took forever to focus. I am going to use this washi tape, which came from a Diamond Art Club kit, and I am going to put it around the border of Tweety Bird here. Now there is a very small overhang of glue, so I'm hoping that is enough to make it stick. Sometimes this washi tape needs a bit of extra glue, and what you can actually use is Diamond Art Club has their own adhesive now that you can find in their accessory section. What I am doing here, if you can see, I don't wanna zoom in too much because I'm gonna forget to zoom out, but what I'm doing is I'm just making sure the washi lines right up against those diamonds and I'm going to put it down. Now, I chose this washi because it, it was a little bit colorful so I thought it would hide the printing in the back. I can still see some showing so I'm gonna try doing two layers here. What I was saying is you can get the Diamond Art Club adhesive and put some of that down before you put the washi tape down just to make it stick better and to be honest, this second row here might actually uh, lift off, but we will see. And I'm going to do it on this side as well. Now, I'm not going to, let me just double check. I don't think I was going to put it on the uh, sides because the way that these bars are going, yeah, I'm gonna have diamonds right up until the edge, but we do have a little bit of overhang here. So let me finish up here. If you would rather paint the border of your canvas, I recommend acrylic paint. I like the plain old fashioned black with a bit of a glossy finish. I have found the glossy finish looks better in my opinion than a matte look. That's just my preference. There is no right or wrong when you do any of this stuff. It's just matter of preference. I am excited to try this framing out. I've never framed in this manner. I've wanted to, but to be honest, when I've looked up the <laughs> instructions before, my brain fog is so bad sometimes that I just could not understand it. And I'm like, that is way over my head. I'm just gonna stick to my curtain rod method and call it good. But I wanna give this a try and I wanted to film it for you guys so that if some of you would like to use stretcher bars, you know how to do it. 
hopefully I come across nice and clear. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I do sit down and read each and every comment you guys leave me and I do try and respond to everybody as well, at least while I still can. So I am confident that this washi tape is sticking. It's not peeling up yet, so that's a good sign. So I'm going to flip my diamond painting over. Now do not, um, do not assess the back of my diamond painting. <laughs> I've got, I can see cat hair everywhere and some sweater fuzz as well. But you know what? The back really does not matter in the scheme of things. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out these uh, frames just like this. So when you buy a set, you're going to have two that fit down lengthwise and two that fit down uh, widthwise. Now, it's easier for my brain to wrap around which way I need to have things facing by standing them up like this. So when everything is said and done, what you want is you want all of your corners to connect like this. So just like a nice, a nice picture frame point. Sorry, I can't hold my arms up. They get very shaky. So um, sorry about that. But to get this all in frame, I did have to bring the table right down to the floor. So that's about where we are here. And you know what I'm gonna do actually? I'm moving off to the side, hold on. Okay, I've moved us off to the side a little bit. I hope that that is okay. So yes, when we are completed, this is what we are going to want it to look like. Now the hard part is making sure that your frame one is straight and two that it is even when you flip the painting over. Now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So on these sides, we are going to actually have some of the diamonds cut off. And I want to try to have it even on both sides. So what I'm going to do is just play with it. I'm not somebody who usually takes a measuring tape and does all the math and make sure everything is like even to the decimal point. That's not me. I use my eyes and I just guess. The only time I measure things is if I am baking, which I never do. So I don't measure things anymore. So again, I'm just doing little little movements, little trial and error. That's gonna, that's perfect. So that's where I like that one. Now I have to make sure that now the top to the bottom is even without kind of disrupting too much here. So again, I'm just feeling with my, my finger. You know what? I'm happy with how those are sitting. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull off the sticky tape on the wood bars, stick it to the canvas and then fold them back up. So I have them just sitting like this so that it's easy for me to visualize it. And I'm trying to think of the best way to get this. Uh, bear with me as I'm thinking in my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel and I'm going to struggle with this. So this tape on this side obviously is covered and you just peel it off just like a band-aid. And I'm assuming this is, oh yeah, that's very sticky. And there's also some on the side here. So I'm gonna pull that side piece off too. So we have glue on the top here. You can see it's kind of shiny and on the side there. Now I kept it up like this because again, I'm a visual learner and I need to see how it's going to exactly fit. I'm going to just fold this piece out of the way and I'm going to fold this piece out of the way. Super, super, super sticky. But I want to have it just right. So what I'm going to do, and you know what, I don't want this to, it's really hard to see you guys. Let me see if I can pull this down a little bit. So what I've done is I've taken the sticky tape off. I've put it back where I want it to sit and I am going to fold my canvas up and stick it here, right to that glue. I didn't want to put the wood piece facing down because I don't want it to stick to my actual table because for this painting, it's actually, I'm not going to cover the entire glue there. It's actually going to only cover part of it. I want to show you, so hold on here. I am comfortable doing this, so I'm gonna flip it. So this is what I did. I folded up my canvas where I want it and I have it uh, stuck to that glue. I'm gonna have to put something over here, just more washi tape probably, so I can cover that glue. And you know what I might want as well? I'm just thinking here. 
Can I unstick this? I can unstick it. The question is, how many times can I unstick it before it loses its sticky? I want to move it down a tiny bit. I would only do this once. So again, I'm going to fold this up. That's better. I might need to secure some of that washi tape and who knows, I might actually go back and paint it black. We will see what, oops, I got a sliver, you guys. Be careful with these things. I'm gonna have to take that out with tweezers. Can I get it? I haven't had a sliver since I was a kid. I will get that later. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually set this up again. It should be right about there. Make sure I am facing everything the right way. That's the hardest part for me is to make sure everything, when I flip it up like this, it's not going to be facing the wrong way. That is what I tend to do. Same thing with like Ikea furniture, right? If you don't, if you don't have it right, it's not going to work. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to flip it this sideways. I am going to take some of this glue, the paper off. It actually just lifted it here. Hold on. So on these sides here, there is glue as well. So be careful with that. I'm just going to carefully take this off. Already have cat hair attached to everything. This part of the glue is actually not adhered to the wood. So I'm just going to push it down like that. Definitely be careful when you're working with these because there's a lot of uneven wood. So you will get splinters if you're not careful. I'm actually going to leave that paper there for now. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that my corners line up here. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. I also want to get kind of the other sides situated as well so that I know everything is even before I secure the canvas all the way around. Otherwise, that can be a little bit frustrating. So let me try and do that with the others as well. Let me know if you have any tips. I'm probably going about this the hard way, but I am somebody who looks at something and figures out the problem. I don't really read the instructions. I might need to add more washi tape there. I'm gonna add more washi at the end. I might even end up painting it. Painting a border really is the way to go in my opinion. You will not have any hassle. Washi tape I actually very rarely use, but I thought it might be good enough for this, but we will see. Let me pull this off. Man, that splinter is really hurting. <laughs> I do not really have space in my house to frame everything like this, so that's why I haven't done it. Now again, I am doing this because I am going by feel. And I just, I don't want to have to rip the canvas off. Okay, so I'm happy with how that looks. The one thing that you need to be careful of, and I do need to grab some scissors actually, is you want to make sure you're pulling the canvas very taut. Otherwise, it will sag in the middle. So what I'm going to, I'm going to do the bottom first. And then I'm going to grab my scissors. So, so what I'm going to do is make sure I'm pulling this taut and then, or very tight, and then I'm going to fold it up. Ooh, we actually might, it might work, you guys, because the washi tape, I can see the washi tape. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's going to work. <laughs> Are you somebody like me who kind of just flies by the seat of her pants and gives things a go? Everything I do, I, I very rarely look up instructional videos. I rather try and figure it out myself and then if I get stumped, then I will go to YouTube and look up instructional videos. That is just um, how I, I guess, go through life and, and figuring things out. So we have both sides now secured to the canvas. You can see that there. That washi tape actually did work a little bit. I am going to maybe put some, some sealer on it. We will see. Now I am actually going to show you the instructions. So this thing came with instructions, which I probably should have showed you from the beginning. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I wish you could remind me to zoom out, but hopefully I don't forget. So here are the instructions. 
They're actually pretty, pretty easy. The first one says, lay the painting face down, leave enough space. They say three to four centimeters for each edge, which is what we did. Fold along the marked line of the canvas. Okay, our canvas doesn't have a marked line, so we don't need to do that. Peel off the sticker cover for the wood frame one at a time. To stretch the best, lay each wood piece down close to the canvas edge. Insert the right angle parts tightly. Do one length, one width at a time. Yeah, it's very simple actually. And they also, it also comes with a picture hook that you can just nail in. That is handy. And then over here, they just show you how to um, connect a multiple ones. So if you have some panels that you want to connect, you can follow their instructions too. But let's take a look at the other pieces in here. So these pieces are actually going to go in the corners to stabilize it a bit more once we are done. Then they send these two things, which are for the picture hook, if you want to hang it up on your wall. These things, I'm not quite sure actually what these are. And I couldn't tell from the instruction. Nail the traceless hook into the wall. Traceless hook. Huh, I've never seen that before. We've got some screws here as well. Those are for the picture hook things, but this is what I want, these little things. So these are going to go on the edge of our canvas. Now, am I zoomed in all the way? I am. Let me show you this. So I don't know if you can see it from there. Yeah, you might be able to. Bottom right of the screen, you see these two uh, openings on the corners. The bottom left has it too. I just have the paper covering it. Hold on. So it does have it. It has it on all four corners. You can see here and here and then also down here it has and over here. So what we are going to do is we are going to take this little staple and we're actually going to fit it into the holes on the wood already. Now you might have to kind of reach over extend. And this little device is going to help keep the pieces of wood from coming apart. Now, what I'm going to do after I have these kind of in, or maybe I can push it. Can I push it all the way? I can actually probably use the end of my scissors. There, I'm going to do it on this side as well. This is actually fairly easy. And as I said, I haven't tried this yet but the instructions are actually quite clear. I am going to put this, because these wood pieces are tilting now. It's just the way that they go. My hand is getting stuck to the glue. If only I had four hands, life would be a lot easier. Well, actually, really, if I had two hands. Last one will go in this corner here. Sorry, I'm out of frame. A little bit hard to get in. They a little. They have to stretch a little bit. Some of them, these one over here, I'm probably going to have to get in with a hammer, but I'm going to do that after. And now what I want to do is pull the canvas up on these other sides. Now, well, two things. One, we want to make sure we pull it nice and taut before we stick it to the glue, but then we need to deal with these corners because if we don't deal with these corners, what's going to happen? It's going to be all bunchy and it's not going to look very good. So I am guessing what I would like to do. What I'm going to do to start is I'm going to cut a line bottom right just down here, kind of where that canvas naturally creases from the bend. And then what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pull this piece that's at the top here and I'm going to pull it this way to the left and make it stick to that glue there. And I'm going to do it on the other corner too. So on the left side, I am going to make a slit in the canvas right where it meets. And then I'm going to pull this one across so it sticks in the glue. Now I may need to add some extra glue. So you can see here on the left, we have this canvas stuck there. So I may 
need to put uh, some double-sided tape over that. Actually, let me grab that while I'm doing this so I don't forget. So I just grabbed some double-sided tape that I had in my craft drawer. And I'm just going to put it over this piece of canvas that is on the side. That way it will uh, be sticky when we pull up the remaining part of the canvas. I'm actually going to go hammer this down on the counter. I'll bring this back. Okay, guys, I have hammered down the, um, what do you call them? Like the staples in the corners. So we have them in all four corners. It was very easy. I just took a little hammer and hammered them till they were flat down. So now that I've cut the piece off my canvas, or I made the slit in my canvas, what I'm going to do is I am now going to pull it up. And I want to be careful. I want to make sure that I am pulling this as taut or tight as possible and evenly so that it doesn't sag when we flip it over. If only we had <laughs> more than one hand, but I think we got it here. I also don't want another splinter. I am happy with how that looks. Now I'm going to flip it and we are going to do the same. So I need to cut a slit in the side of my canvas. So again, I'm just cutting where it naturally makes that kind of corner mark. And then I'm going to pull this piece down first. I'm going to add a little bit of my double sided tape to go on top of that. That way it sticks to it nicely. This glue on these frames is super sticky, you guys. Very sticky, very impressed with that. Again, I'm making another slit on this side, pulling that over putting some double-sided tape. Now we are going to do the last, well, one of the last steps. We are going to pull this side over again. Sorry guys, ugly extension cord plug in over here. I, uh, my battery ran out, so I have that plugged in now. I didn't want to wait to film the rest of this. So what our final step is, is to pull the remaining part of this canvas. Now what I'm doing is I'm anchoring my fingertips on this part of the wood and kind of pulling the canvas towards me so that it provides a little bit of tension and then very carefully bringing it up to stick on the glue here. And then I'm just going around with my thumb and making sure that this canvas is tight with the glue. This part of the canvas, this side of the canvas actually folds over really nicely all the way around. On the top here, we have the catchphrase, do what makes you sparkle. On this side, we have uh, probably I will cut this part of the canvas down. You can see here, I may add some washi tape to cover that white part, or I may paint it. And then over here too, it goes right up to the edge there. I am happy with this. Here is what it looks like. Now I do have the bit of washi tape on the ends just because the uh, length of the stretcher bars are a little taller than length of the painting. But overall, I am happy with this. For a first time attempt at doing stretcher bars, I can see a little bit of kind of wax in the canvas here. So what I might do before the glue really sets, I'm gonna try to pull it even more. And it might be that where I need to pull it is actually top down. I'm telling you guys, this glue is really good. I'm just going to pull it off a little bit here, and I want to pull it tighter this way. Yes, yes, yes. If you have a second pair of hands, like a husband or a kid, it might be helpful just to get everything perfect. I mean, if you are framing on a budget and you don't want to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars at Michael's just to do this and... and you, what I would recommend is do what I'm doing, practice on a smaller canvas. And then I actually have another canvas that I did buy these stretcher bars for to see about framing it. Though I might save it because I really don't want that one in uh, stretcher bar frames, but I will see what I decide to do. Here we go. So let me just continue finishing this. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I am going to cut along this line here just to trim off that excess. And 
And I'm going to do it over here as well. There we go. So that's better. Here is Tweety. That is much better. So I tightened up this corner a little bit. Again, it's trial and error. And of course, I didn't measure anything. I kind of ballparked it. Some of you that are OCD might, might be like, this pink is a little bit wider than this side. That's my OCD, but it's not bothering me at all. What I see a lot of people do, I think the look that is the most popular is getting a frame so that the diamonds go all the way to the edge here instead of having it like this. I mean, easy fix is painting this and I might paint it. The washi tape along the top, it's okay. I mean, it's matching on both sides, so that's nice, but it might look a bit better if uh, I painted it pink. So maybe when I'm done filming this, I will go back, paint it pink and show you what it looks like. And then I'd obviously paint this pink too. Now the part that I didn't finish, so these things, these four pieces here, they're used just for stability. And if you notice when I tip this frame, there is kind of halfway through these wood pieces, there is a slit and that's where these kind of fit in. And they're going to fit into the four corners. So starting at the bottom here, just make sure I'm actually going to stand it up. It's just easier for me. You might actually have to hammer them in. Somebody like me can't get this in, so I'm gonna wait till my husband comes home to do that part, but it, it is very simple. It's just that it fits really snug because the point is it's going to be stable, right? So to get them in there, you can either use a little bit of a hammer or get your husband to help you push them in, but essentially they do go around all four sides and they will fit in like that. And then also in the corners up here. And it just provides a little bit more stability for the frame itself because right now it's just, held together by the glue and these little staples here. So this just adds another layer. And then once that is done, just making sure I have this facing the right way. So the final thing is putting this little hook in there. So there's this little hook. Let me raise it, rise it up, raise it up. Little hook here. And it comes with a couple of screws. So you just use the screws that are provided in each hole. Again, that's something that I will leave for my husband to do. And it's ready to go. You can then hang it in your home. So there is my quick and easy way to use stretcher bar frames on a diamond painting. I will definitely give this a go with a bigger one as well. Again, where I store my diamond paintings, I don't really have the space to make a bunch of canvases like this, but I like the idea. I like that it's an option. I like that we can buy a kit like this from Amazon for a reasonable price and put it together ourselves without having to break the bank at Michael's craft store, right? Uh, a little bit of improvising, whether it's painting the border, adding funky washi tape, doing whatever you want to the edge of the canvas. What I would probably try to do next time, and it was a little hard kind of guessing the sizes and, and how I, uh, how they would fit together. But if I do this again, I would probably try and get it so that, that the diamonds will fit the whole way. It will just look a little bit more cohesive and professional. Now these corners here, you can see, let me see if it'll, might be kind of there. So this is where we cut the canvas. I didn't cut a chunk out. I just made a slit and kind of folded it over. So don't mind that washi tape sticking out there. But otherwise it is looking very nice, not bunchy or anything. So I would just put a little bit of probably uh, super glue under here just to glue that down. And I'm happy you guys. So let me know what you think of this framing method. If you've tried it yourself, Share any tips and tricks you may have down below that I can apply to my next framing. If you're new here and you've made it all the way to the end, you'll probably like it here. So hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to be notified when I do post new videos. And until the next one, happy diamond painting everyone. Bye.